I'm Abolore. On today's episode, we'll be looking at questions on trial balance. And in our first episode of this uh, part of the trial balance, we have looked at the meaning, the uses, and the golden rule of trial balance. So today, we want to put in practice those rules of trial balance we have established in our previous uh, episode of trial balance. So there are three ways, three dimensional ways in which questions could be set on trial balance. The first is the one which we have solved in the last uh, class, and that you'll be given a list of business transactions to complete the double entry for uh, them, as well as extracting the trial balance. Then the second part is, or the second way in which questions could be set on trial balances, uh, you'll be given a prepared, already prepared trial balance, and the two sides will fail to agree, just like you have on the board here. And the third one is you'll be given a list of uh, balances, and for you to extract the trial balance on that. So we'll be doing justice to these uh, two questions we have on the board. So, okay, uh, Rod uh happens to be a business owner. So the bookkeeper of Rudyard has prepared the trial balance, which failed to agree, the two sides. Don't forget, we established that when the trial balance is extracted, the two sides is expected to be equal. But here, it's not equal. The two sides is not equal. So that means the bookkeeper, or the accountant that prepared this trial balance, lacks the basic understanding of the golden rule of trial balance. So. As an accountant, you have to display your financial ingenuity. And what you are going to be doing in that regard is you are going to be uh, correcting all those entries that have been made wrongly here. Perhaps some items that ought to be debited have been credited, or some items that ought to be credited have been debited. So let me repeat with respect to uh, the golden rule of trial balance because that will form the basis of you know, solving these two questions you have on the board. So the rule of trial balance states that debits, assets, and expenses, then credits, income, provision, liability, reserves, and capital. So any item of income or liability or provision or result or capital must be credited and any item of expenses assets must be debited so let's prepare this now so that we could uh, go to another question and uh, try solve or do justice to the other questions too. so let's solve this so you can see that the two sides of the trial balance is not equal so we have to correct some of those entries that have been made here wrongly we correct them then when we correct them we will add the two sides again and see if the two sides will be equal so let's start so rodiat a client of your organization asks you to audit our account for year 30th december 2018 so these accounts has been uh, the trial balance have been prepared so let's uh try do uh, some correction of the errors that have been made. So, don't forget, incomes accounts must be credited, provisions, reserves, capital, liability. All these five must be credited. Then expenses and assets must be credit, uh, must be debited. So, sales now, sales accounts is credited. So, this is intact, it's correct. So, sales accounts must be credited as 100,000. Purchases accounts, Okay, let me uh, try to do a little bit of explanation here. For you to be able to prepare your trial balance very well, any item you are given in any list of balances, you must be able, first and foremost, you must be able to classify any of those items in the seven items we have listed, which are expenses, assets, provision, reserves, capital, liability, and incomes. Hey, all those items, you must classify all these into them before you announce say, oh, now that 
Insurance is classified as expenses. Then all the expenses are debited. Let's say assets now. Let's say land and building. Land and building is assets. And all assets are debited. Let's say uh, sales. Sales is an income. And all incomes are credited. So you must be able to classify each of the items first. Before you now pass the golden rule of trial balance. Which states that assets and expenses are debited. Incomes, provision, reserves, liability, and capital are credited. So let's go now. So sales accounts is an income account, and all income accounts are credited. So it's credited. This is intact. Purchases is an expenses, and all expenses are debited. So it's been credited here. So we have to debit it. That's what it means. So the bookkeeper committed an error by crediting purchases. Meanwhile, it should be debited. So we have 80,000 here. So this will be cancelled. We cannot. So sales returns. Another one for sales returns is returning words. So returning words is an expenses account, and all expenses are debited. So this is intact. Rent paid in advance. Rent paid in advance. Who is paying rent in advance? That's Brody out. So when an expense is paid in advance. What that means is that the business owner had paid for subsequent accounting period. And when such happens, we call it assets. So anything, any expenses that is paid in advance is considered current assets. And all assets are debited. So that's debited, is correct. Then, okay, rent paid in advance, it's, it was credited, so it should be debited. So, so it was credited, rent paid in advance. I did say it's an asset. Any expenses that is paid in advance, maybe electricity, uh, insurance, uh, rent and rates and all that. They are assets, current assets. So all assets are debited. Then the next, purchases returns. Another one for purchases returns is Return household and return household is an income, and all incomes are credited. So, return household it should be credited as 350, but it was debited by the bookkeeper. So, we cancel out this, we clean it up. Owing from debtors, owing from debtors is an asset. Owing from debtors is an asset in the sense that when you eventually collect that money from your debtors, be it in form of cash or check. That will be added to the cash you already had in your organization, and that will increase your cash. So, owing from debtor is like the money that the debtors are owing you. So, when you collect it, you will add it to your cash. And you already know your cash is a component of current assets, and all assets are debited. So, we are owing from debtors. It's been credited, and it should be debited. So, that's 2000 Then we play this part. Advertising. Advertising is an expenses, and all expenses are debited. So this is in tax. Commission paid. Commission paid is an expenses, and all expenses are debited. So it's been credited here. So we credit it. Uh, we debit it. Sorry. Insurance accrued. Any any expenses that is accrued, that is owing, that is unpaid that is in arrears, that is outstanding, all are considered liability. And all liabilities are credited. So insurance has been accrued by Rodiard. That means Rodiard has not paid an insurance premium as at when due. So it's considered a liability. So all liabilities are credited. So it, this, is, this will be credited. So we have to rub up this. Debtors. Debtors is considered current asset. They are asset. They are people that are owing you, organizations that are owing or ready at. So when she eventually collects that money, that we had up to the cash she already had in her business organization. So debtor is an asset, current asset to be debited. And we clean up this part. And creditor. Creditor is a component of current liability and all liabilities are credited so it was debited here so it will be credited so we paint this part the next discount allow discount allow is an expenses 
any allowance, any reduction by a business to uh, its customers is considered discount allow. And discount allow being an expenses will be written off to the profit and loss account as an expenses. So it's an expenses, but it was credited. Don't forget, all expenses are debited. So it was credited. So we put it back on the debit side. Discounts received. Discount received is an income. What they had bought or purchased goods from the supplier. And instead of that to pay, let's say, much more amounts, then the supplier has got to pay uh, less. Or the supplier is giving her a rebate. We call it rebate. Or a, a relief or a discount. Let's put it that way, discount. So that discount reduces the amount she ought to have paid if she had not been granted discount. So discount is an income to whoever that is receiving it or to whoever that is buying or purchasing. So discount received is an income and all incomes are credited. So it will be credited, but it was debited. So let's credit it. One, two. So we claim this. Then carriage out word. Carriage out word is part of the cost of is an expenses basically and carriage out what are those expenses you incur in taking the goods from your warehouse your customer's warehouse perhaps some customers as the you sold to your customer basically then instead of the customer incurring the cost to take the goods to his or her warehouse then you incur those costs all those costs you incur as a business to uh Deliver the goods from your home warehouse to customer's office or warehouse is carried outward. So they are attributed to cost of costs that are attributable to sales and their expenses. And all expenses are debit, uh, debited. So it's been credited, so it should be debited. Land and building is considered non current asset or assets or fixed assets so all assets are debited so this is intact then provision anything provision pay provision for the upper debt provision for discounts on debtors provision for depreciation any kinds of uh, provision must be credited so that's credited three five but it was debited here so we cancel it then stock stock is a current asset and all assets are debited so it was credited there, so we debit it. So we cancel this, we clean this up. Carriaging words. Carriaging words are cost of purchases. They are part of cost of purchases. They are those expenses you incur to bring the goods where you have purchased it to your own warehouse. So the cost that body has spent in bringing the goods from where she purchased them to a warehouse is called carriage words. So carriage words are costs or expenses and all expenses are debited. So this should be debited instead of it being credited. So we clean this. Then the last but not is capital. Capital we have a credit balance. So and that's 196,990. So we've been able to correct all these errors now. Then we'll now see if we have these two sides now, the debit and the credit, they will be equal. All right, so let's add, excuse me. So let's have for the credit side. The credit side now, we have 100,000 plus 350 plus 130 plus 7,000 plus 1, 2, plus 3, 5, plus 196,990. So we have the total here. The total has changed now because we have been able to correct all those zeros. So we have 309, 170, 170, 3, 309,170 Naira. Then we have for the debit side now, let's add for the debit side. So we have 80,000 plus 150 plus, sorry. Plus 150 plus 8,000 plus 2,000 plus 400 plus 320 plus 5,000 plus 1,000 
plus 900 plus 170,000 plus 40,000 plus 1,4. So the two sides, we have 309, 170. So the two sides are now equal now. We were able to achieve this because we, we were able to correct some errors which the bookkeeper of Brodiat had committed. That means by debiting items that ought to be credited and crediting an item that ought to be debited. And what that means basically is that the bookkeeper lacks the understanding of the golden rule of trial balance, which states that debit all assets and expenses, credit incomes, provisions, reserves, capital, and liability. So that's with respect to the solution uh, to the first part of the question, which we have. So let's do justice to the second part of this question now. So excuse me, let me, so I hope you all can see now. So let me go over this part so that we can solve the second part of the question. So, so let's solve the second part of the question now. So let's write. Uh, let's go. The following balances were extracted from the books of John Enterprise. Enterprise is on 31st December. 31st December, let's say 2019. 2019. So these are the list of items that were given. So you are asked to extract the trial balance. So let's start. So solution now. Solution. Solution. So the name of the business is John. John Enterprise. John Enterprise. Enterprises. Then the accounts we are asked to prepare is trial balance. So okay, 1998. We are even given 1998, December 1998. So trial balance. That's what we are asked to prepare. Trial balance. So the dates, most times you can write the dates on the uh, column side, or you can write the dates. So whichever way is the same. Trial balance for the year what? For the year ended, for the year ended 31st December 1998. So this is what we have. So we don't need to put the date in the column any longer. So let's start. So we have particulars. We have particulars. Then we have debits. And we have credits. So this is what we have. So so this is what we have. So let's start now. Free old property. Real property. That's the first item there. Real property. Real property is a non current asset, and all assets are debited. So we are going to debit it. That's 50,000. So 50,000. Capital. That's the next. Capital. Capital will always be credited. So that's 81,445. And the next one, we have trade creditors. Okay, trade debtors, sorry. Trade debtors. Trade debtor is the same as debtors. And all debtors is considered a current asset. And current asset is an asset. And they are to be debited. So that's 28,750. Then we have the next one. That's trade creditors. Trade creditors. Creditors are liabilities, and all liabilities are credited. So we have 26,150. Uh, we have the next one, furniture and fittings. Furniture and fittings, look at this. We are given two figures here, cost, 22,500. Then the next book value, 16,250. This is the, the present worth of the assets now. We call it net book value. That's 16,250. 
So you are not going to consider the cost. It is when you are preparing the balance sheet that you tend to consider the, the state the cost. And because assets are expected to be uh, to follow the historical cost concept, which means all assets must be recognized at their cost or uh, value and not the net realizable value or the net book value. But in preparing your trial balance, it is the net book value you are going to consider. So we are not going to buy it. It is this that we are going to consider. So please take note. Very important. So this is 16,250. So furniture and fitting now. Furniture and fitting. Furniture and fitting is an asset. They are, they are your drawers, your table, your chair, and all that. So that's 16,250. Then rent. Rent is an expenses, and all expenses are debited. That's 950. 950. That's 950. Electricity. Electricity is an expenses, and all expenses are debited. So that's 675. The next one, we have provision. Provision for bad debts. Provision for bad debts. Provision for bad debt is 288. And you know, all provisions are credited. So we have 288. We have office equipment. Office equipment is an asset, non current assets. And all assets are debited. So you are not going to consider the cost like I emphasized earlier on. It's the net book value which you are going to state when you are preparing your trial balance. But when you are preparing your balance sheet, this is what you are going to state. And this will still form your net book value in your balance sheet because you have the cost, accumulated depreciation, then you have the net book value. So this is what we are going to consider now, 15,500. So it is an asset, all assets are debited. Then we have stock, stock. Stock is an asset, current asset basically. So all assets are debited now, 7,750. Then general expenses. General expenses is an expenses. That is self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. So all expenses are debited. That's 2350. Then we have rates. Rates. Rates is an expenses. So all expenses are debited. That's 625. You can see the way we are going about it. You must first and foremost classify the item given in any of the seven items given. Then when you are able to do that, then that means you understand it. And that's what we are doing here. So understanding is very important here. So cash in hand now. Cash in hand is an asset, current asset. And all assets are debited. So cash in hand. Cash in hand. Cash in hand is an asset. That's uh, 137 is debited. Then we have bank overdrafts. Bank overdraft is a liability. Bank overdraft is when you have withdrawn or when you've been allowed as a current account holder to withdraw more than what you have in your bank account. And that means you are owing the bank. It means your, your bank account is in rent. That's what it means. So bank overdraft means you have withdrawn more than what you have in your bank account. Let's say you have 500 naira and you've been allowed to withdraw 2,000 naira. So it means you are owing the bank one five. That's what it means. So it's an overdraft. So all liabilities, bank overdraft is a liability, and all liabilities are credited. So that's uh four four five seven. Then we have bank charges. Bank charges are expenses. So all expenses are debited. That's three seven three. Then we have purchases. Purchases and expenses, and all expenses are debited. That's 6750. Then we have sales. Sales is an income, and all incomes are credited. So we have 74,000. 74, we have carriage, carriage inwards. Carriage inwards are expenses like i explained earlier and all expenses are debited that's 395 salaries salaries are expenses and all expenses are debited 
all expenses are debited. Then we have discounts, discounts allowed. So discounts allowed is an expenses, and all expenses are debited for it by. Then the last but not least, that discount received. Discounts received is an income, and all incomes are credited. So we have three, three, two. So that's basically what we have. So let's add both the debits and the credit side of the trial balance, which we have extracted from the list of balances given in John uh, for John Enterprises. So let's add for the credits. So we have 81445 plus 26150 plus 288 plus 4457 plus 74,000 plus 332. So we have 186,672. 186,672. That's what we have for, for the credit side. Then let's check for the debit side. So let's add all this. So 50,000 plus 28,750 plus 16,250 plus 950, 950 plus uh, 675 plus 15,500, 15,500 plus 7750 plus 2350 plus 625 plus 137 plus 373 plus 6750, 6750 plus 395, plus 1700, plus 485, plus 485. So we have 186690. So let's check. If there had been no uh, error here, so 26, 150, 288, 44, 57, 74,000. Then let's check if, because there seems to be difference of uh, 8 there or thereabouts. So 8, 1, 445, plus 26, 150, 26, 150, plus 2, Eight eight plus four four five seven plus seventy four thousand plus three three two. So, uh, okay, let's check fifty thousand twenty eight seven fifty sixteen nine fifty six seven five fifteen thousand five hundred seven seven five two three. Five zero six two five one three seven three seven three sixty seven fifty three nine five one seven hundred four eight five. So, uh, this is what we have ninety. Okay, so that means we have eighteen six six nine zero plus the minus eighteen six six seven two. So it's in plus three three two. So this is three fifty. Three fifty. So this is three fifty here. Three fifty. Not three uh three two. So here now we have six six nine uh zero. That's what we have basically. So if we had the two sides now, it means the uh two sides of the trial balance is now equal. So we've been able to solve this uh, question uh, now. So that's with respect to uh, trial balance as a topic. So uh, I want to employ everyone to uh, subscribe to our YouTube uh, page. Uh, after which a bell will uh, come up, ring that bell so that each time we put out a video, that we uh, come straight directly to your uh, smartphones, your laptops, and you will be the first to get uh, the video. Give our video likes, uh, 
uh, and help us to share our videos to our friends and relatives and to everyone whom uh, this uh, video could uh, be benefit, uh, beneficial to. So please, I want to also uh, employ everyone to keep supporting us in any way you can. At this juncture, I'll see you on my next video. Do have a good one. Bye-bye.